Uh, hi everyone. So today I will be talking about unveiling the complex temperature structure of the CGM. Mainly I would be uh, talking about the very hot phase of the CGM, super virial phase. And uh, at last I have a slide about cold phase as well. So let's start with super virial phase. So I would like to answer the question that where is the super virial hot phase in our galaxy? So before starting about super virial phase, so our Milky Way temperature, virial temperature is roughly like 2 times 10 to the power 6. It would be like equal to 2 times 10 to the power 6, sorry about the greater than sign. And super virial temperature is kind of more than the virial temperature. For my work, I would be like maybe using this cutoff 6 times 10 to the power 6k. Um, so this is like the different sight lines we are exploring. So basically, these are the extragalactic quasar sight line. And there has been discovery of this super virial hot phase in this extragalactic sight lines in recent times. So these are like summary, summary of those absorption and emission detection of this super virial hot phase. So this is kind of, you can see that there is like neon tin hot iron and you can see that it is kind of fitted by very hot temperature of t equal to 10 to the power 7 k and there has been many other detection along these different sight lines and not only in absorption also in emission and there has been also not only towards particular sight lines also in the all sky surveys like halosat um, Erosita and Suzaku observation, there has been detection in uh, all sky emission and also in the stacked uh, all sky x ray absorption as well. So, this super virial phase is very abundant in the Milky Way CGM. That's the main point I'm trying to make. So, that's not my work. So, I'll move into answering the question that where is this super virial gas? Because as we are like seeing it along absorption column, we do not know where it is located. So for that, we have some galactic source. So basically, we have some XRBs, X-ray binaries in our plane and we would try to look for these same ions in those galactic sight lines. So let us see whether we can detect this high ion like neon 10, silicon 14, sulfur 16 in those sight lines. Yes, we can detect some of them. So basically, this is one of the XRB and you can see that with narrow line, you can actually fit it a silicon 14 kind of line here and not only here, also in like Cygnus X1, this is another XRB, you can actually see a broad uh, silicon 14 line. But now then you can, you might say that, okay, then the problem solved, it's coming from interstellar medium, it's not coming from CGM, but we have a large sample, we have kind of like 28 XRBs and like out of 112 observations of different combination of these XRBs, we only have 25 detections. And so these are the basically all the observations and there are a lot of numbers but you can look at those bold numbers those are the detections and 25 is a small number comparison to 112 but there is also like there is some detections right but if you look down like deeply into it then you also see this 25 detections are also not coming from the intervening medium which are between xrbs and us so it are they are mostly uh, intrinsic to the XRB sources because we kind of tested the variability of these lines and we see most of the lines, most of the detected lines are variable in nature. So basically most of them likely intrinsic to XRB source and not from the intervening medium between XRB and us. So then the conclusion from this would be, so this gas is either extra planar or in the extended CGM. Now, how we would break this degeneracy between this where it is, like whether it is an extra planar or extended CGM. Now, here comes the simulation basically. Simulations can give us insight because in simulation we can check these things. So, so this is one of my simulation where we ran it with Gizmo. It's an idealized box of Milky Way type galaxy. And 
as this is like you can see the phase diagram at one of the snapshot and this horizontal line actually marks the supervirial phase temperature cutoff and as you can see that there is some supervirial phase some gas within this 20 kiloparsec so basically the conclusion from this simulation is the supervirial phase is at least in the simulation we can see it within 20 kiloparsec so mostly they are from extraplanar region well and not only in one snapshot so this is a one snapshot we are catching the supervirial phase in lot of different snapshot and with different variation of our run so basically we have tried like low resolution run high resolution run we have cosmic ray low cosmic ray high cosmic ray and surprisingly we also see this gas in no feedback run so when we don't have any feedback we see this gas so that is actually surprising because we thought okay feedback is causing the heating of this gas but in our simulation apparently it's not the dominant process so then the question is how is the supervirial hot phase is formed so then we tracked this gas particle back in time which we find like supervirial so this is one of the tracking so basically we track the gas we find supervirial at 1 giga year and tracked back in time so as you can see that this is a temperature track back time and you can see that it's starting from virial temperature and then it slowly increases and basically give rise to the supervirial phase and immediately after it is going to a supervirial phase and it is basically cooled down immediately and as you can see in the density there is also increase in the density also uh, and this is the position of the supervirial gas and you can see even at like 1 giga year it is at like within 10 kiloparsec but it is coming from 50 kiloparsec it is actually a infalling gas which are infalling and giving rise to this supervirial phase so the main physical mechanism what we think is going here is like the infalling gas are actually infalling virial gas are actually getting heated up due to the compressive heating and because of that the, it is going to give rise to this supervirial phase so this is the blue lines i'm talking about i will get into this orange line later and to our all the surprise we can see basically in all of our runs we can see this same mechanism and that is why we are also catching this uh, in our no feedback run so now you might ask the question then all of the infalling gas are getting heated up to supervirial phase or there are some exceptional so the exceptions are in orange and as you can see that there these are the infalling gas those are starting from virial temperature but they are not getting like their temperature is not getting rise to supervirial phase then the question is why why some of them are getting heated to supervirial phase due to compressive heating but some of them are not then we dig more into it and we actually try to uh, see what is the initial uh, angle the gas infalling gas is making with the rotation axis of the galaxy so this is the theta i'm talking about so this is the rotation axis of the galaxy and this is the gas infalling and this is the theta i'm plotting the initial theta of those gas particles which are in infalling so this dashed line are the the uh, solid lines are the one which are making it to supervirial and as you can see you can see a clear pattern that these gases are the solid lines are more of close to the rotation axis and those are making to the supervirial phase whereas this dashed line which are also in falling virial gas but they're not making to the supervirial phase are far away from this rotation axis so what is happening here so infalling gas which are closer to the rotation axis are going to uh, heat it to the supervirial phase and reason for that would be because near the rotation axis the density is low and because of the low density there would be like less radiative cooling and more compressive heating and that's why the infalling gas near to the rotation axis are getting heated up the supervirial phase and the one which are actually in falling farther away from the rotation axis are not getting heated up to that high temperature so and also we dig down that how much amount of gas actually in our simulation are coming from like feedback like stellar feedback the supervirial gas and we 
we we track those gas as well and we see that 1% of the super radial gas is coming from stellar feedback and we would love to see more simu like more simulations and see that whether like there are some different stories we can get so this is my take home points basically and so basically super radial gas is an extra planet disk and we can concluded both from observations and simulations and it is coming from infalling radial gas near the rotation axis and stellar feedback contributes 1% of this gas so i would just take a minute to say, uh, like talk about cold phase so basically this is a ram pressure i can't like uh, control myself to showing this picture so basically this is basically with uh, kind of a host galaxy and lmc smc like satellite orbiting around this host galaxy and as you can see there is some ram pressure strip tail around this uh, satellite as we expect this is one of the snapshot i'm talking about and this setup is with no cosmic ray and with cosmic ray as you can see the cloud ram pressure strip cloud structure is completely different so there you can see some fragment of clouds ram pressure strip clouds are actually getting destroyed or mixed very easily but when we put cosmic ray into it it is completely a different structure it's kind of a coherent long tail so basically coherent cloud structure formed with cr because cosmic ray are actually able to put extra pressure support to these clouds and making them survive so it would be very interesting to like observably kind of see the size i mean power spectrum of this clouds ram pressure strip clouds and if we can see it and we can like see this kind of coherent structure maybe we can tell something about this cosmic ray component in the galaxy or in the surrounding region so with this i will end my talk so thank you so much for your time <laughs> Time for a quick question or comment. If anybody has a, a quick question or comment, please. Uh, I notice this is probably not what you were focusing on, but do you know what happens to that super virial gas? Um, you know, like after you have identified it, like does it actually fall onto the disk? Yeah, it, it's actually getting super virial phase before joining to the uh, uh, disk, and after they join to this, they immediately actually cools down and get into the ISF. So it's kind of a very transient phase. It's between that. Cold phase and hot uh, video phase, basically. Yes. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Ashu, if you could please come up and get set up. I, I, so let me actually follow up is, uh, uh, one question there. So you said it falls into the disk. Does it eventually form more stars? Um, not really. I mean, it just sort of stays hot in the disk. No, it's it's cooled down, and okay. that is actually forming stars. But yeah. obviously, uh, we don't see increase in the star formation rate, but. These are the gas which are forming stars, basically, okay. this cold gas. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you. Oh, one more question, please. Oh, I'll follow up on that. Mm -hmm. So if you think of this transient phase, you know the amount of time it stays. So does it have some kind of correlation with the star formation rate that, that you can compare with observations and theory to see? Uh, but uh, I mean, it is a like a steady state process. It's always like there is an infalling uh, virial gas is coming from, right? I mean, I mean, you can catch this super virial phase at all time step. It's a transient phase, but you are, I mean, there is another set of virial phase which are basically getting dropped down. So we can't like say that. I mean, uh, I mean, what I understand that you can't basically say the enhancement of star formation because it's always infalling. The particular phase is transient, but it's always there. I mean, it's always in falling real gas. Okay. So, sorry to keep barking. I was just thinking if in a steady state and stars are being formed in the disk and the gas is being depleted, and you're dropping the sub super virial phase into cool phase, if, if the disk is not growing in size and gas disk, then, okay. then the two sort of balance. Okay, okay. So, yeah, yeah. Okay, thanks. Okay, let's take the speaker off the side.